everybody, Rich here with uh, Prep You Down here in the bunker. And this video is, as it says, we're going to discuss the uh, Safety Act, which is an extension or the final portion of a bill signed in on January 22nd, 2021 by Governor J.B. Pritzker. Uh, and it was called Illinois House Bill 3653, the Pre-Trial Fairness Act. And I know what you're saying right now. You're going, Rich. This is a preparedness um, channel. Why are we talking about a pre-trial fairness act that was passed by Governor Pritzker in Illinois in 2021? And now the final phase of it is being uh, enacted January 1st, 2023. And that portion is called the Safety Act. Well, what we try to do on this channel is we try to get you to understand what you need to do to prepare for the future. And that could be for anywhere from hurricanes to tornadoes to snowstorms to loss of job uh, to anything in between, loss of power, flooding, um, all that kind of stuff. But we also talk about uh, Second Amendment rights and how to train for firearms and the reason we do that is because once you have all the stuff you have uh your food and your supplies and your you know your generators and your rain gear and boots and sleeping bags and tents and all that kind of good stuff uh your backpacks full of stuff your first aid equipment stuff like that we want you to be able to protect all that kind of equipment because you can have all that stuff and that's really really great but if you can't protect it or keep it safe or keep you safe and your family safe it doesn't amount to a hill of beans as my dad used to say um so that's why we are going to talk about this uh the safety act and uh why it is important and we're going to look at both sides of the issue because there's always two sides to the story and everybody, like I've told you all along in many, many of my, of my videos, and you can see, watch all 306 if you got nothing to do. If you want to binge watch, that'd be awesome. Uh, and click on some of the sponsors and buy some of the good stuff. Um, but, you know, you can look at, you know, we have all the different playlists and everything. And if you're not a subscriber, great time to subscribe because we're going to keep coming out with more and more videos. And stuff like that. But back to the point at hand is what I want to do is if you've never heard of the pre-trial fairness act or the portion that we're going to really uh, address the, the safety act portion, um, I'm going to read it to you and let you explain. Uh, there's a lot of hype out there on both sides, both sides of the aisle are, you know, screaming, you know, you know, this isn't fair. That isn't fair. You're a racist. No, you know, you're, you know, whatever. Uh, so I'm going to try to get through all that and let you decide, because that's what I always tell you. I can show you what to put in your everyday bag. I can suggest what should go in your bug out bag. I can show you all the cool stuff, you know, for a first aid kit, whatever level or a trauma kit or whatever level is. But you have to decide what's going to be in your kit. You have to decide what's important for you to carry, where you go, uh, what you do, uh, stuff like that. And that's kind of with this. I want to give you the information so you can make a decision. Um, I've had uh, several subscribers uh, when we were discussing um, purchases of firearms or transfers of person to person firearms to each other that have come up with, you know, oh my gosh, Rich, you know, the safety act that comes in, you know, January 1st, 2023. I don't understand why everybody is in concealed carry. I, you know, and I get your point. I really do. Um, but let's look at the facts of this bill and let's find out why it was uh, enacted. This is going to take a little while. Um, I'm going to, I've got several articles uh, that, I've pulled and I have some information here and there, but I want to go through it methodically so I don't miss anything. And I may repeat myself and I may triple peat. I'd say three peat, but the bulls own that, uh, uh, that terminology. So I can't say three peat uh, information, although I think I just did. But anyhow, I hope they don't sue me. 
anyhow, let's take a look at this act. All right, so as we know, it was called the Pre-Trial Fairness Act, Illinois House Bill 3653, signed into or signed by into law uh, by Governor Pritzker January 22nd, 2021, the state of Illinois. If you aren't in the state of Illinois, believe me, it's coming to a state near you. I know some cities have the no cash bail. That's another name for this, no cash bail bill. All right. So now you're going, oh, now I know what you're talking about. All right. So let's go through this. This is actually um, an article that I, I took off the internet from the Jordan Law Firm. That's the Jordan Law Firm. And this was back um, August 29th. Uh, I printed it, so I don't know when. Oh, March 12th, 2021. All right. So this is shortly after it went into effect. Uh, so basically, uh, Governor Prisker hailed the passage of this bill as a substantial step toward dismantling the systematic racism that plagues our communities. All right. So basically, the law eliminated detention based on wealth, so they said. Um, they basically said there's a lot of people in, in, uh, being held in prison, some not charged yet, which I don't understand why you would be in jail, not prison, but in jail and not charged, but I'm not a lawyer and I don't play one on TV and I didn't stay at a holiday Inn express last night, but, um, the fairness part of this is they were saying, you know, if you're wealthy, you can get bail. Um, I always thought that whether you were wealthy or poor, you could go to a bail bondsman. Uh, and it wasn't based on credit. It was based on personal recognizance. So maybe some people that have skipped out on bail haven't been able to get bail the next time around. I, you know, I don't know. I could be way off course here. But the law eliminates tension based on wealth, replacing it with a strict process for determining the risk of flight or violence. Um, so like I said, it goes fully into effect January 1st, 2023. And they talk about one thing is clear prosecutors and criminal justice attorneys in Illinois will have their hands full adjusting to the huge changes. Uh, if you're an attorney, maybe you know what that means. I'm not really sure. So a great deal of discretion over the amount of bail and whether to require it at all based on the charges and the assessment of the defendant's flight risk and other factors. If the defendant doesn't have enough money to pay for bail, they can seek funding from a bail bond company. Bail bond companies require a 10 to 15% of the bail plus collateral such as a car or a home. So you could see where some people don't have the money, they don't have collateral, so they wouldn't be able to get it. So that's you know another thing. Um, if the defendant doesn't have sufficient funds for the bail bond premium or no valuable collateral, the defendant will be forced to remain in custody until the next court appearance. All right. So this means that regardless of the crime alleged, people with less money are more likely to spend in jail. In addition to reducing the amount of time a defendant can spend with their Illinois criminal attorney uh, or their defense team. Behind bars causes needless trauma for defendants of modest means. I get that. Definitely get that. But it really depends on the crime too, right? So the current bail system in Illinois uh, was the Illinois Bail Reform Act of 2017. And that already made significant uh, changes. Uh, the act specifies a large number of nonviolent crimes where bail would be non-monetary. So Illinois has always had a portion of a, uh, a cash, uh, non-cash bail. So, um, but basically, some of the some of the examples back then were um, people, um, you know, could use alcohol monitoring devices for persons arrested under DUI charges or a requirement that the defendant keep a distance from a person that accused them of abuse. Um, we all know how well that works. Um, and for offenses where bail could be imposed, there were reforms to make it slightly more, less burdensome, such as an entitlement bond, reducing the hearing to 30 days and reducing the amount of bond required by $30 a day until it reaches zero. So, but how has the cash bail law changed in January, 2023, all right? 
Pritzker proudly announced that the Pre-Trial Fairness Act would completely abolish monetary bail. But in the interest of public safety, defendants charged with these crimes will be held without bond. Okay, this is people that, uh, these are the crimes that people will be held without bond at all. They stay in. First degree murder, sexual assault, arson. Felonies involving the force or threat of force. Stalking and aggravated stalking. Domestic abuse. Some gun crimes. And some gun crimes. All right. So, the, the Commission on Pre-Trial Practices determined that non-monetary conditions for release must be least restricted method possible. Did I print that twice? I don't think I did. So, those are the ones that are not, you cannot get out on bail. All right. So, what do the attorneys think about this? All right. Proponents of the criminal reform applaud the change uh, because uh, it's a central issue for criminal justice reform community due to its disproportionate impact on low income people and people of color. They cite the negative impact of being forced to wait for months, even years uh, in jail, um, being held with because they can't get the bond. Uh, they, they talk about all kinds of, you know, this person or that person was was held without being charged again i still don't understand how you can be um i suppose january 6 comes to mind but anyhow um i digress uh be held without being charged with something i i'm just not sure okay opponents cite public safety concerns opponents are concerned with proper mechanisms are not in place to ensure that defendants that are dangerous are not released uh, and they show some examples here. Um, so they, for example, they talk about New York. Okay. In New York, judges are not allowed to set bail for a long list of misdemeanors and felonies, including stalking, assault without serious injury, burglary, and certain types of robbery and arson. Uh, this happens in a large part because of outdated concepts that require judges to consider flight risk, but not public safety. Some opponents also cite loss of revenue to municipalities. All right. Well, I don't think we should be worried about that. Uh, Illinois criminal charges. Um, so the Pretrial Fairness Act is a well thought out piece of legislation that criminal justice community believe has great potential. There will be many changes in regulations and procedures over the next couple of years as it is implemented. So there you go. That's kind of in a nutshell what it's supposed to do. Um, it's supposed to help people that just don't have the money for bail uh, based on nonviolent crimes. Um, it also is, from what I understand, it's going to take a look at who is awaiting trial um, and in jails right now, and they will be released. The other article, next article that I have, um, kind of goes into that so you could see kind of a balancing act here you know you have you know uh public safety and not keeping people in jail uh because they can't afford it they they don't have access to their criminal defense attorneys uh other than every once in a while when the criminal defense attorneys can go to the jail they can't go to their office uh you also have you know flight risk you have to worry about flight risk uh, so it's, it's kind of a juggling act and it sounds like, you know, like all laws and everything, they, they will be looked at, you know, over and over. Let's look at this article. All right. So this article is basically talking about, um, in Illinois, a hundred out of 102 county prosecutors are fighting, fighting back against what they see as an incursion on just judicial discretion and community safety. Now, like I said, I'm not an attorney, never was an attorney. Um, so you got to kind of like listen to these guys. So if 100 out of 102 county prosecutors don't like this, you got to wonder why. They will go to the legislature later this year, and it appears maybe to court if it fails. All right. You know, signal a big uh, test to see the Illinois state's attorneys and counties statewide who want to balance the rights of the accused for the rights of their communities to safe streets and spaces. 
Um, so what they're saying is bail is to protect the public and victims and witnesses and to guarantee the appearance of the offender in court to answer the charges. What they're saying is what's going, that's going to be turned on its head as the bill goes into effect. Um, so Prisker continued to defend the cash uh, bail provisions saying last week that we do not want someone in jail because they were arrested for a low level crime like shoplifting to be sitting in jails for months or even years. I agree. You know, uh, another concern uh, of another one, he says, the issue is not pre-trial release for first time shoplifters, but the new constraints on how judges can treat defendants who are charged with far more serious crimes. All right. So, um, apparently this was, they're, they're saying that this was rammed through without many people taking a look at the bill in the, the waning hours of 2021 lamed up session. And they're saying they want to take a look at this law again and try to tweak it where it needs to be tweaked. So the language specifying outline cash bail as of January 1st, 2023 is found on page 335 and 336 of a 764 page bill. So the DuPage County um, prosecutor explained, there's categories of offenses such as all drug offenses, all aggravated DUIs and all forcible felonies for which you can receive probation, which includes robbery, burglary, arson, aggravated bar uh, battery, where judges have no discretion. They cannot detain defendants in those cases unless they find the state provides the person is a willful flight risk, meaning they are planning or attempting to intentionally invade prosecution by concealing oneself which he states is very hard to prove if someone's a flight risk. All right. He said, also bothersome to prosecutors that the lang bill's language qualifies consideration of the risk of a released defendant may pose to the community at large. He says that under parts of House Bill 3653 taking effect in January, some alleged felon perpetrators can be detained on high cash bail before trial, but only if prosecutors can show that the defendant's pre-trial release poses a real and present threat to the physical safety of a specific identifiable person or persons. So the catch here is demonstrating a threat to a specific identifiable person or persons versus the community at large. And this is the is put on the burden of the prosecutors. It's not on the burden of the criminal or the person that committed the crime to prove that he won't leave. They have to prove that he will or is a flight risk. Um, so the community risks not speci specific to an individual can nonetheless be very real. Yet now these risks would not be grounds for pretrial detention under new legislative provisions. So you have to prove that that person is going to go after somebody specific or specific persons. So they've talked to several other uh, county prosecutors and they said when this law goes into effect that in the seven collar counties ringing Cook County, four to 5,000 prisoners awaiting trial will be released and prosecutors under the new law will be able to seek reconfinement reconfinement of only about a third of them and then only for 90 days. He adds, the trouble is that the current caseloads will prohibit prosecutors from getting ready for trial within 90 days. If I can't lock up violent offenders, we'll have the same situation here as in Cook County. When criminals realize there are no boundaries, they are more brazen. So Glasgow states. So we go on in this article. So let's see, we go through 
many of the uh, state's attorneys throughout the state are looking at House Bill 3653 uh, as a major problem it's going to cause their offices um, to totally change the way that they they look at and maybe you think maybe they should maybe they should look at a different way maybe some of these people should have you know no cash bail um i think they're looking at specific ones you know like uh berlin said we're not worried about the shoplifter you want to give them cash bail that's fine uh, but they need to appear. And if they don't appear, then there needs to be, you know, a warrant out for the rest if they uh, don't appear. And then that puts it on the police, uh, to go find them again. Um, so it was written, um, that cash bail and emboldened in the bill denies crime victims, their constitutional right. Article one, section 8.1 of the Illinois constitution codifies in the Rights of Crime Victims and Witness Act mandates that crime victims shall have the right to have their safety and that their families considered in denying or fixing the amount of bail, determining whether to release a defendant and setting conditions of release after arrest and convicting. Eliminate bail clearly contradicts previously established and superior law, places crime victims at greater risk to be re-victimized and unnecessarily subjects witnesses to threats and intimidations. So Berlin himself uh, is thinking about legal remedies. He says the Illinois Supreme Court in Hemingway versus Elrod has affirmed on the issue of bail, it's supposed to be a balancing project process. Judges are supposed to balance the right of the accused against the right of the general public to receive reasonable protective consideration by the courts. He said, um, the constitutional right to bail must be qualified by the authority of the courts with sufficient evidence to deny or revoke bail for a defendant before trial to prevent interference with witnesses, jurors, and to prevent the fulfillment of threats. Um, and he's right. You know, there's all kinds of things uh, that need to be looked at with this bill. Um, so the ball's in your court, people. Um, either way, you have a phone and you have a pen. I think Obama said that. You have a phone and a pen. If you're pro this, then let J.B. Pritzker and try to convince some of your uh, county state's attorneys that, hey, it isn't going to be so bad. Uh, everything will be fine. If you don't like the idea or if you're not 100% sure, investigate this. Go online. Go to DuckDuckGo. Type this in. Look at the different things. I looked at, you know, Snopes and they said some of the concerns were mostly false. And But when you read it, um, they're looking at articles put out by uh, different conservatives and Republicans that are, are against this bill. Um, if you're against this, let them know, you know, make, make a big deal out of it. Um, let your, uh, the people that, uh, represent you at the state house, let them know about it also. But I think at, at the very least, like some of my subscribers have said, um, maybe it's time that, uh, with, you know, the release of more people. And as you can tell the defund the police. Uh, movement and some of the other movements, if you don't have a way to protect what you have, your family, you, your prepping supplies, maybe it's time you do it. And I'm going to tell you, if you're going to do it, take a class. Don't just go out, you know, and get a FOID card, but you, you should do that first. Get a FOID card, take a class, go to the range, have somebody show you how to do it, spend a little extra money and know how to shoot that firearm that you're going to buy. Don't just go out there and buy a firearm and think you're going to be good at it because you're not. So my point is balls in your court, run with it or don't. It's totally up to you, but I wanted you to know about what's coming January 1st, 2023. Just like I wanted to know that you know what's going on with person to person transfer in Illinois, you know, in 2023, 2024, 
and on. Um, I'm just a messenger. Um, but if you like the message that I sent you or concerned about anything else, you want me to look at anything more deeper into this, um, talk to some other attorneys that I've talked to that aren't too happy about this. And others say, you know, let's just wait and see. Let's see what happens. So that's it. Um, if you got any comments, please comment. If you're not a subscriber, see the bubble up here? It says subscribe. Uh, oh, no, this one over here says ring the bell. So you're notified instantly of any video that comes out. So that's it. Like I said, it was going to be a long one. I hope you stuck it out. I hope uh, it uh, didn't make it more confusing for you. Uh, subscribers that uh, sent me a bunch of questions about this or comments about this, thank you. I totally forgot about this video. You brought it back to my memory. I appreciate that. And like we always say, always be aware of your surroundings, no matter where you are, walking the dogs or skunks and stuff uh, at work, home, play and at school. Uh, also, make sure that you have plenty of food on hand uh, for sheltering in place and uh, the right type of food to bug out. And please, please prep like your life depends on it because it really does. Thanks a lot. Take care. See you next time.